Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to the video. I hope your morning's been great. Mine's been fantastic. And today we have a really awesome video. Now it's not only being brought to you by me, but also one of our own viewers. So the reason I say that is I actually didn't come up with the full idea for this video. I helped a little bit on it, but Sincaster from Discord and Twitter helped me out and said this would be a good video and I completely agree. So that's why we're making it. So if you guys have a really good idea of a video you want me to make, all you have to do is join the Discord and you could win a shout out on a video just like Sincaster. So if you have a great idea and you want a shout out in a video, be sure to watch these next few minutes while I explain what the perks are of being on my Discord and how this idea is going to come together. If not, then skip ahead and we'll be talking about the Koreans, how many there will be in the Overwatch League, and why they might be a huge problem moving forward. But now let's first talk about the idea and my Discord. So if you guys didn't know, I actually do have a public Discord. It's always in the description. You can join at any time and get more involved with the community. So the idea that I had is really cool and a lot of people on the Discord already seem to agree with that. So what I'm going to be doing either weekly or just randomly is asking everybody on the Discord to send me a message and tell me one video idea that they really want to see. And I will sift through every single message and pick the one that I like the most and make a video about it the next day. So as you guys can see, this is my actual Discord here. We have around 3,000 people on here, and the guy who won this week was Sincaster. And if you win, you give me the idea that I end up making the video on, you will get the genius roll for a week, or until the next time that I ask everybody to send me a message. So here's what I did. I said, everyone, PM me your serious video ideas, and I'll make the best one right now. I got literally 100 messages, and Sincaster, he had the best idea. So congratulations to him. Go follow him on Twitter. Link will be down below in the description. So that's the overall idea. If you're in my Discord and you randomly get the notification that I'm looking for video ideas, you message me it. If I like it, I'll pick it. You'll get the shout out. You'll get the role on the Discord. You get to be more involved with the community, kind of get some clout, you know what I'm saying? I think it's a really fun idea and it seems like everybody on the Discord actually agreed. So this is something we're gonna try out and do for maybe a couple weeks. Again, congratulations to Sincaster. He did suggest that I make a video about Koreans and why they're so dominant with their work ethic, etc, etc. So we're going to talk about that within this video, but it's also going to be involved with like how many Koreans are going to join for season two, what Korean contenders teams are going to get picked up as expansion teams, stuff like that. Now, if you guys are absolute legends and you're watching the entire video and you're hearing me right now, go down into the comments. Let me know that you're dedicated and say the discord is hella lit. I'm joining now. So everybody who types that down in the comments, I know you're a true viewer. You watch the entire videos. You're here for the community. I'm going to be dropping hearts on all of you guys and trying to respond to every comment that says that. And I just want to say thank you for watching my entire video. It really does mean a lot to me. You guys are the freaking best. Now, this isn't the only cool thing about my Discord, guys. We do a lot of awesome things. Like earlier in the announcements, I did like a small sneak peek of the video I was making today. Earlier today at 5.43 p.m. before I dropped this video, I said, everyone, top 10 players that need to leave their team before season two, yeah or nay video. I got a bunch of votes. 72 said do it. 17 said not to but the video was already made. I said, good, because it's uploading, it will be live in 30 to 45 minutes. So I was just letting everybody know, you know, quick sneak peek. And then I even posted the thumbnail before the video was up. So everybody got to look at that. Video was dropping in 10 minutes. So yeah, we have a really cool community on the Discord. You guys should definitely join, get more involved, send messages there. You can also get instant notifications and really cool things like this. If you ever want me to make a video of an idea you have, join the Discord and message me when I ask you guys. So be sure, go down to the description, boys, click the Discord link, stay updated with everything, instant notifications, all that good stuff. And now let's go ahead and talk about the video for today. So we are talking about Koreans and why they can be a huge problem for the Overwatch League, since I mean most of the Overwatch League is Korean. That kind of is a problem already itself. And it's only going to get worse because obviously there's going to be a ton of new Korean players and overall Korean teams joining the league for season two, which we are going to be covering as well, which teams from Korea contenders and players will more than likely be joining because there's going to be a lot more, especially according to some decent sources. We'll take a look at those. And then in the second half of this video, guys, we are going to be looking at some of the highlights from yesterday's talent takedown rematch. Oh my god, it was crazy, honestly. It was much closer than the actual one on stage, but they did have some subs here and there. It wasn't like as legit as the actual one the Overwatch League did at All Stars, but it was still absolutely hilarious and amazing to watch, so we will take a look at those highlights. So if you guys are new around here and you're excited to watch this video, be sure to drop a like on it, and also click the red subscription box, guys. Everybody who clicks that red subscription box, I absolutely love you, and you can stay updated every single day with everything that has to do with the Overwatch League. And now, without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and hop into this video. 
All right, and now starting off with Korean Overwatch players and why they might possibly be a huge problem for the Overwatch League. So I just tracked these stats 100% off the website by myself. There are 122 players in the league currently. Out of those 122 players, 56 are Korean, guys. That's a whopping 46% of the league being Korean. Now, out of the 12 teams in the Overwatch League, three of them are 100% fully Korean. We have the London Spitfire, New York Excelsior, and Seoul Dynasty. All Korean players, no other nationalities, and are the only teams in all of Overwatch that are one full nationality. So out of the 12 teams, none of them besides Korean are a full nationality. There's no full USA team, there's no full Swedish, Canadian, nothing. Just full Korean. And that's 25% of the league's teams, guys. Take these numbers in for a second. 46% of the league is Korean, 25% of the league's teams are just full one nationality Korean. That is absolutely insane, and it just shows that the level of Koreans play in Overwatch is way above anybody else's in the world. But you guys want to know what's even crazier, and the most insane stat of them all, is that out of all 12 of the Overwatch League teams, every single one of them has a Korean player. That's right guys, 100% of the teams in the Overwatch League have a Korean player, and that's probably not going to change for Season 2. Every expansion team that comes in, all six of them will have a Korean player. I would bet any money on it. Now, these stats right now don't seem too scary. They're just insane. But this could become very scary for a lot of Western players in the scene. Now, I know as the league continues to grow, that means there will be more spots available in the league. But also, as the league grows, that gives more Koreans more chances to join the league. Let's go ahead and take a look at this tweet from Yiska, who does write for Winston's Lab, and also just has been involved in YouTube and a lot of different people within the community. I'd say he's got a pretty trusted opinion. He tweeted this out. From all off-season rumors I've heard, fans of Korean Overwatch who want to see those players in Overwatch League will not be disappointed. So he's basically saying he's heard a lot of rumors about a lot of Korean players joining the Overwatch League, which pretty much adds up and makes sense to me, right? Let's just go ahead and look at Korean contenders last season and talk about which teams could possibly be joining the Overwatch League as full teams. So in first place, we had Runaway, who obviously is going to join the Overwatch League. Their talent stacked from every single role. These guys will be a full team 100%. If they're not, I'll probably do something crazy like jump off a bridge. Not really, but I'll be pissed off because they deserve to join the league 100%. Then moving on to the second place team, we had Kong du Panthera, which, well, if you guys didn't know, Kong du Panthera did post on Reddit and on their Twitter and on their Facebook pretty much everywhere that they were recruiting players and coaches for next season. Now, why would they be doing this? Obviously, because they're losing a ton of their players to the Overwatch League. If I had to guess, most of this team would be joining the Overwatch League together as well, probably as a core of at least five to six players. So that's two out of the six teams already that will probably be joining the Overwatch League as full Koreans. Now moving on to these next four teams, which are all really good and could possibly be joining the Overwatch League as full teams, but in my opinion will probably join as cores of maybe two to four players each. The next team, we have Element Mystic, who were really good in Season 1 and Season 2. They've consistently showed that they are a great Korean team, and because of this, their strong core will definitely be getting picked up. Then moving on to the next team, we have Metabellum, who in Season 2 definitely showed that they are a top team, and they can peak really high if everyone on their team is playing well, and again, I think probably a core of maybe two to three players will get picked up. Then moving on to X6 Gaming, who didn't do very well in Season 2. I mean, they did okay, they got 5th through 8th, but they did win Season 1, and they definitely shown that they were a great team, and they can consistently do well. I do know a lot of their players are going to get picked up. I'd say four to six of them, maybe not as full teams, but will get swapped around here and there. They will be joining the league. And then there's also teams like O2 Ardient, who did very well in Season 2 and Season 1. That's literally five to six teams right there who have a ton of players that will be joining the league. And that's not even talking about the individual stars from some of the bad teams. Someone like Stryker who got picked up for season one, who wasn't very good in Korean contenders. He actually got last place like every single season, but he was a gem. He was a hidden star within one of the bad teams, and we'll definitely see a decent amount of those players get picked up for season two as well. So this 46% is going to get bumped up to like 57, 60, 65 even. And then the fact that we're adding Runaway and probably Kong du Panthera as full Korean rosters to the league, 
League, that means five of the 18 teams will be full Korean. And very well, some of the other expansion teams coming in could convert to full Korean as well. They might just pick up players from every single team, add them together, and be all Korean. That wouldn't surprise me. So that 25% of the league's teams being full Korean is probably going to get bumped up to like a 33%. And now this is where the problem starts to occur for Western players and possibly Western viewers. So as more Korean players join the league, more of the teams and owners are going to realize, well, if you want to win, you have to get Korean players because... I'm sorry guys, they're just better. They are. They have better work ethic, they have better infrastructure, their coaches understand what they're doing more. They've been playing and competing in video games for most of their lives, and some of these guys from Korea were literally just born to play video games. It also helps that the Korean culture is just a lot more humble than the Westerns. I mean, let's be honest guys, Koreans, the way they talk to each other, the way they interact, is way nicer than a lot of us Western people, and that's just fact. I mean, you can see it within the players. Take for example somebody like Prophet extremely humble but he's still one of the best players in the league and gosh darn it i mentioned profit again it's so hard not to but he like he's so good but so humble at the same time i honestly don't think he's had one cocky moment the entire season and then we look at somebody from the west like eqo who was also very good and was in the grand finals against profit who's very cocky now i'm not saying cocky is overall really bad yes in some instances it can really help you out but it can also bite you in the ass in multiple ways and a lot of it has to do with your teammates and inner workings of your team if you're cocky with your teammates and coaches that's not going to have a positive impact it never will now i'm not saying eqo is cocky with his teammates or coaches at all i was just using him for an example because he is a western player and i could have used sinatra i could have used anybody from the west taimu there just are a lot of players that are pretty cocky from the west and a lot of the players from Korea aren't. As for somebody like Profit and most other Koreans who are extremely humble to each other, they will never run into these issues with player conflict because of cockiness. Now this is just one example of the Korean culture being more humble than us. There are a whole bunch of little things that make Koreans better than Western players, but a lot of it really just does have to do with their work ethic and the structure that they've had within esports for the past 10-15 years. They really are just ahead of the curve. Everybody else is behind and Korea is ahead when it comes to esports. And now I think most of you guys will get why this is a problem for the Western players and the Western scene overall. If you know all these jobs are going to Korean players and all the owners and managers realize the way to win is to go with Korean players, then most of the teams are going to slowly keep converting over to more Koreans, more Koreans. Sure, there might be some Western players that stay in the league here and there, a couple on each team. Because yeah, we do have some really good talent in the West. We have Big Goose and Chaz, one of the best support duos in the entire league. They're from the West. We have Agilities and Soon, one of the best DPSs. They're from the West. Players like that will always be able to make it in the league. It's just that a lot of the ones that the bottom are going to be dwindled out. Players like Avast, who really haven't gotten a chance to play, he's just going to get cut for more space so a Korean could join, and then he's never going to get a chance to try out for another Overwatch League team because he's not Korean and he never actually played on the stage. And I think eventually, as time goes on, once we get to like season four or five, the league is going to be like 75 to 80 percent Korean, and maybe even in like seven seasons if we make it that far, which hopefully we do. It might be like 90% Korean, which would be absolutely insane. Maybe 90 is a stretch, but I do think we could get up to like 80%. And I think that might be bad for viewership in the Overwatch League because would we really want to all watch a bunch of Korean players play? Specifically, I know I would because I just enjoy Overwatch League as a whole. But for people that want to be fans of their cities and actually relate to the players, I don't think they would be so excited to have a bunch of Koreans on their team, especially if they're not winning so much. And yeah, Korean teams win, but if every team's Korean, then there's going to be a lot of losing Korean teams. That could really become a problem. I would honestly think, all right, let's just go watch another esport. Let's watch League of Legends where there's a North American only league and I could root for my American teams there and then at the end of the year we can see the Koreans in one tournament the world championships dominate everybody but for most of the year I can watch my American teams we won't really have the chance for that the main league will be all Korean you won't be able to watch your American teams so it could potentially become a problem. I'm trying to play devil's advocate in this video because personally, from my perspective, I don't think it will be that big of a deal. I will still enjoy Overwatch League if it's all Korean 100% because the games would probably be better anyways. Not to say that it is going to be 100%. I know there's some really good Western players that are better than a lot of the Koreans and will remain in the league. I already mentioned some of them, but it will make the games more exciting. The level of play will go up and that's really fun for somebody like me. 
But this does raise questions. Should the Overwatch League add some type of region locking where you can't have a full Korean team or where there just can't be a certain amount of players from a certain region? I really don't think that's the answer though and I would hate to see that. I think more of the answer would be like just add a North American League or a Korean League and a European League more like League of Legends and then have a world championship at the end of the year. Obviously that would be a massive change from the Overwatch League and they do have this idea and concept and that would be too drastic of a change right now. We'll just have to see what happens and how the League League plays out for the next few seasons. All I know is I love it right now and I'm going to continue loving it no matter what because this game is amazing, the community is amazing, and the Overwatch League is insane. And now I've been talking about this for like over 10 minutes. I think I've gone as in depth as possible. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Are you scared that the league would become too Korean? And if it did, would you stop watching it? Let me know down below, guys. And now let's move on and talk about the talent takedown rematch. And what can I say? It was epic, man. Atlantic finally got their revenge. Bren was popping off. He pulled out the Torb hammer. Oh, there were so many crazy moments. So we got a 5k diva bomb, all because of Monte Cristo's insane earth shatter. And by the way, I don't know who was starting the rumors about Monte Cristo being trashed at Overwatch. He clearly is not. He was setting plays up, getting huge shatters. He pretty much carried King's Row, but unfortunately for the Pacific team, it was the only map they could win. Atlantic team did come out on top of 3-1. Let's go ahead and roll some of my favorite highlights from the games, guys. Okay, okay. Is that okay, chat? Is that okay? That was awesome. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, my chat has been playing me for can, the longest time that none of my bombs bit. actually hit anything. Yeah, that's an insane diva bomb from Zoe, right guys? But this clip really doesn't tell all. Let's go ahead and look at Monte Cristo's perspective, because it was kind of all him, not gonna lie. Bomb over shield, bomb over Ryan shield. Let's go. I can't have it and boot him out the way. Go, Diva. Alright, so Yanya. Diva, go. Bomb, 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 bomb. La Bamba. Q! Oh, oh, yeah. so okay. <laughs> Let's go! Let's fucking go! No, no, no. Let it be. No. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, Monte Cristo's a beast. He made the shot call. He hit the huge shatter. He knew what to do there. Now let's go and take a look at some more highlights. Oh, I should not have done that. You're gone, Ender. You're gone. Oh, no, I'm the only one who's gone. Need help? Oh, no. Yes! You got a hammer kill on the call. Yes! Monty has been hammered! Monty has been hammered! That wasn't Monty. I got him! Oh my god, my favorite perspective to watch this whole thing from was definitely Bren. He is hilarious, man. He got the hammer kill off Monty. What a legend, guys. I would recommend if you guys do have a lot of time and you want to laugh, watch something entertaining, go to the past broadcasts from some of these casters and analysts. It's hilarious. Definitely worth the watch. And I mean, it only makes sense, right? Atlantic won this time. Pacific won the first time. It's one to one. We need to finish out the best of three, guys. One more rematch. Pacific versus Atlantic. Winner takes all. At least that's what I think they should do, guys. Let me know if you think they should rematch down in the comments below. And that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, it, drop a fat old like on it and don't forget leave that comment down below whatever you guys think about this video let me hear your opinion join the discord it's absolutely lit guys i'm telling you you don't want to miss out on the cool things we do there and lastly if you are not subscribed by now Jeez, boys, what are you doing, man? Join the family, get the notifications on daily, never miss out on anything about the Overwatch League, because I'm going to bring it to you every single day. I'm out of here, guys. Thank you for watching. Peace. And one last thing I just got to say, with the background footage, Runaway winning their first contender season, eh, oh my god, that's insane. It brings a tear to my eye. These guys celebrating, they wanted this victory so bad, and I can't wait to see them in the Overwatch League. Much deserved. Shout out to Runaway and all their fans. All right, now that's the end of the video, guys. Peace.